Not too long ago, we saw how credit growth in Indonesia was in a double digits. That dissipated since. Is there reason to perhaps worry about the health of the banks in Indonesia? Well, if you look at uh, the banking system uh, as a whole, uh, the, it's still relatively healthy. If you look at capital adequacy ratio, it's about 20 to 23 uh, percent uh, by January this year. Uh, if you look at net interest margins, run, still around 5 percent, one of the highest in Asia. And if you look at loan deposit ratio, it's around 92, 93 percent, which is, is quite prudent. Having said that, credit growth is coming down. If you, uh, if you compare to uh, January 2019, which was growing by 12 percent, uh, by January this year, credit growth was about 6 percent which means that the loan deposit ratio is improving. However, it's improving because of the slowdown in credit growth. And, of course, if the uh, economic deceleration continues, then we can expect credit growth to remain relatively low. The question really is where it goes from here. We've yet to see the end of this pandemic. I mean, it will have an impact on the banks in Indonesia as well as the rest of the region. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, the, the system, as I said before, the, the capital adequacy ratio, the, the equity base of, of the banking system is relatively good, relatively. Now, of course, if the world economy uh, dips into uh, uh, massive deceleration or even a recession, then the Indonesian economy, the regional economy of South, Southeast Asia will be affected and the banking system will be affected. Uh, having said that, uh, the Indonesian banking si system was recapitalized following the Asian financial crisis in 1998. And the banking system became a lot more uh, prudent and conservative, uh, and therefore it, it managed to survive the, uh, uh, the global financial crisis in 2008. Uh, and it, it's likely uh, to survive the, the current crisis as long as uh, the second half of 2020, we can expect an economic uh, recovery uh, globally and, of course, uh, in Indonesia as well. Uh, so, Fauzi, um do you expect bad loan ratios then? Is that expected to balloon? The, the what, NPL? Non, yes. Non, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Non-performing loans at the moment is around 2.8 percent. That's gross NPL. It's, it's, it's creeping up uh, from around uh, 2.5 to 2.6 percent uh, January uh, last year. Having said that, if you look at uh, uh, loans at risk, which means that restructured uh, uh, call one loans, uh, call two loans, and NPL is creeping up uh, above 10 percent. Okay, so perhaps we're not seeing the same types of credit risk that we saw, of course, during the Asian financial crisis. Uh, obviously, we've seen the credit ratings of Indonesia and Crew quite a bit since then. What about the small banks? Are, are they well capitalized enough to weather the financial and credit volatilities out there? Uh, the small banks. Uh, if, if you look at the, uh, the book one uh, banks, uh, uh, capital adequacy ratio is it's pretty high, it's around 30 percent now. Having said that, the rural credit banks uh, will be heavily affected. So these are, uh, they're not commercial banks, they, they are uh, small uh, village based banks, they will be affected. And there, there are about 1,800 of them, uh, but uh, the authorities are pushing for consolidation in any case. And in any case, also with the commercial banks, there are about 115 commercial banks uh, we are looking to consolidate. And therefore, uh, on the lighter note, uh, if there is something positive that comes out of this uh, economic deceleration, is the consolidation of the banking system, which is much needed. If it gets worse from here, if there is a collapse of the big banks, is there enough? Is there enough capacity to save them? Okay, if, if we talk about the, the state-owned banks, the state-owned banks have the government behind them, i.e. The, the Minister of Finance is likely to recapitalize the state-owned banks if something happens to them, which is unlikely for the, uh, for the moment. If we talk about the uh, large uh, privately-owned banks, i.e. the, the, the uh, publicly listed privately-owned banks, uh, as long as they have strong uh, strategic investors, uh, especially international investors, then we're not too worried. It's the family-owned banks that may be at risk. Now, when it comes to the family-owned banks, they are not the biggest. They're not uh, systemically important by and large. And uh, the IGIC, the, the Resolution Authority of Indonesia, has the funds uh, to, uh, to 
provide resolution for them. I mean, I, it, it doesn't mean I mean it doesn't mean that they're going to be bailed out. If, if, if they fail, they can be liquidated. But what matters is that the depositors uh, are covered as long as they meet the, the criteria that IDIC sets. Fauzi, what about on the consumer side? How do you think individuals and companies are holding up? Uh, it's it's certainly a, there's a deceleration, and uh, there, there has not been a lockdown of the country yet. Uh, th this is a dilemma. On one hand, on as far as public health is concerned, uh, we like to discourage uh, congregation and 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 economic activities. You know, on the other hand, to provide an effective stimulus uh, supported by interest rate cuts and, and fiscal stimulus, you need those economic activities to accelerate. So uh, it, is, it is a dilemma. And in, in a way, we are very much dependent on the discovery of the, uh, the medicine, the vaccine against uh, coronavirus. Because in, in many ways, Economic activities are more likely to recover when the public is confident that there is a cure to this disease. Uh, Fauzi, just one final question before we let you go. How much more fiscal room is there and has Bank Indonesia done enough? Where does it go from here? I mean, uh, BI has cut its policy rate by 25 bips to 4.75%. Uh, and if you look at the uh, fiscal space of, of, the, of the government, uh, fiscal deficit is still less than 3% uh, of GDP. So there is fiscal space. And if we look at the global interest rates, they are very low. And therefore, most emerging markets uh, can uh, borrow, can, can raise uh, funding uh, from capital markets at relatively low interest rates, as, as long as, as, long as uh, of course, the uh, markets recover.